channel, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and leave a comment. An asymptote is a line which the graph approaches but never intersects. In this lesson, you will learn about the vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and the oblique or slant asymptote of a rational function and how they are determined given an equation. One kind of asymptote is a vertical asymptote. It is a vertical line, it's a vertical line, which the graph of the rational function approaches and approaches from both sides, from left and from the right, but both of these graphs will never intersect the vertical asymptote. The graph just increase without bound on one side and decrease infinitely on the other side. Okay? Okay, let's have example 1. Find the vertical asymptote of f of x equals x plus 1 all over x minus 2. To determine the vertical asymptote is to identify the value which cannot be x value in the given equation. We have discussed this in detail already when we talked about finding, finding the domain of a rational function. So see the concept behind this from that video. So going back to the given function, to get the vertical asymptote, that is, you have to equate the denominator to 0. In this case, the denominator is x minus 2. So to get the vertical asymptote, we have to equate it to 0. Okay? And then by APE, we have x equals 2. Therefore, the vertical asymptote is x equals 2. That is, the graph of the given function will approach x equals 2 from the left and from the right, but it will never intersect x equals 2, okay? since that is the vertical asymptote. A second example, find the vertical asymptote of f of x equals x minus 3 all over x squared plus x minus 12. Okay? First, we have to reduce the given into, into lowest terms, or we have to simplify it first. So, f of x equals x minus 3. Then, we have to factor out the denominator since it's still factorable. Factors of x squared are x and x. Then, factors of 12, by trial and error, you may do this, um, can be 3 times 4. Factors of 12 can be 3 times 4. Since it's negative, then they have different signs. But then, the middle term is positive, hence... The greater, which is 4, will become positive and 3 is negative. Okay? Then we may cancel out x minus 3 and what's left is f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 4. Why is it 1? Because when you divide x minus 3 in the numerator to x minus 3 in the denominator, their quotient is 1. So we have f of x equals 1 all over x plus 4. Now again, to get the vertical asymptote, we have to equate the denominator to 0. So that is x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals negative 4. This x equals negative 4 is the vertical asymptote. That is, when you graph the given function, its graph will just approach x equals negative 4 from the left and from the right, but they will never intersect this vertical asymptote, x equals negative 4. The horizontal asymptote, on the other hand, is a horizontal line, which the graph of a rational function gets nearer and nearer from the top and bottom of the line, but never crosses this horizontal asymptote, even how far the graph extends to the left and to the right. Okay? As I have explained in one of my video tutorials um, regarding finding the range of a rational function, a horizontal asymptote is defined this way. Let n equals the degree of the numerator or the highest exponent of the numerator, m be the degree of the denominator, 
or the highest exponent of denominator, A, be the leading coefficient of the numerator, and B, be the leading coefficient of the denominator. Now, if N equals M, the horizontal asymptote is Y equals A over B. If N is less than M, horizontal asymptote is Y equals 0. And if N is greater than M, there is no horizontal asymptote, but an oblique asymptote which we will discuss later. Now, let us consider this example. Find the horizontal asymptote of f of x equals x plus 1 over x minus 2. Now, what is the value of n, or the degree of the numerator, or the highest exponent of the numerator? As we can see, we have x to the first power here, and actually this one has x to the 0 beside it. Okay? Recall that x to the 0 is equivalent to 1. Any number raised to 0 power is 1. Hence, 1 times 1 is 1. That is why all you can see here is 1n, but actually, it has x to the 0 beside it. So, by comparing 1 and 0, 1 is greater than 0. Hence, the degree of the numerator is 1. It's the highest exponent of the numerator. Now, how about the value of m? Okay, m is the degree of the denominator. Now, the degree of the denominator is 1 also, since x is raised to the first power, and since... Um, for the same reason, we have x to the 0 here, and 1 is greater than 0, okay? So, m is equal to 1. How about the value of a? a is the leading coefficient of the numerator, okay? So, how can we find, how can we determine the, uh, the leading coefficient of the numerator? Simply look at the term where you got the degree, where you have obtained the degree, okay? Its numerical coefficient is 1, Hence, the leading coefficient of the numerator is 1. How about the leading coefficient of the denominator indicated by b? Okay, it's 1 also for the same reason as we have explained earlier. Okay, now, since n is equal to m, both of them are equal to 1, then therefore, the horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b. Okay, that is y equals 1 over 1 or simply y equals 1. Hence, the horizontal asymptote of the given function is y equals 1. That is, the graph will approach y equals 1 from top and bottom but they will never intersect y equals 1. Okay, next example. Find the horizontal asymptote of h of x equals x minus 3 over x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, so first, let us factor out the denominator. Okay, that is, that is, h of x equals x minus 3 all over, okay, the denominator is a trinomial and its factors are two binomials. So, factors of x squared are x and x, and then, Factors of negative 12, you may do this by trial and error, are positive 4 and negative 3. Okay? And then, x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 is 1. Hence, what's left is h of x equals 1 over x plus 4. Now, we will now determine the values of n, m, a, and b. And then, we have to compare n and b to get the, the horizontal asymptote. Now, n is equivalent to, what do you think? Okay, so as we have explained earlier, this constant 1 has x to the 0 beside it. Okay, hence the value of n is, okay, 0. How about m? What's the value of m? Okay, it's 1. Since the exponent of x here is 1 and the highest degree of the denominator is 1. Okay. How about a, the leading coefficient of the numerator? It's 1. And how about b, the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1 also. Okay. Now, let's compare n and m. Now, n is 0 and m is 1. Therefore, n is less than m. 
Recall that if n is less than n, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Hence, the horizontal asymptote of the given function h of x is y equals 0. That is, the graph of the function will get nearer, nearer and nearer to y equals 0, but they will never intersect this horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Okay, last example. Solve for the horizontal asymptote of the function g of x equals 9x cubed minus 7 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. So let's try factoring to reduce to lowest terms if ever it's not yet in simplest form. So g of x equals, since the numerator is non-factorable anymore, we'll just copy it, over, let's factor out the denominator. Factors of 3x squared are 3x and x, and then by trial and error, factors of negative 1 are negative 1 and positive 1. Now, there is no common factor that we may cancel out. So, we will take the given since it is in the simplest form already. Okay? So, let's rewrite the given. 9x cubed minus 7 all over 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay? So... What is the value of our m? n, the degree of the numerator is 3. How about of the denominator? What's, what is its degree? It's 2. How about the leading coefficient of the numerator? It's 9. And the leading coefficient of the denominator is 3. Okay. Let's compare n and m. n, which is 3, is greater than m, which is 2. Hence, there is no horizontal asymptote, okay? But, there is an oblique or slant asymptote. And to solve for the slant or oblique asymptote, this is what we're going to do. We have to divide the numerator of the given by the denominator. That's either by long division or synthetic division, okay? So, let's divide 9x cubed minus 7 by... 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay? Can you still recall how to do the long division? Okay. So, 9x cubed divided by 3x squared is 3x. And then, you have to multiply 3x or to distribute it to all the terms of the denominator. So, 3x times 3x squared is 9x cubed. And then, 3x times 2x is positive 6x squared. And then, 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Then, you have to subtract this 9x cubed plus 6x squared minus 3x to 9x cubed or from 9x cubed minus 7. Okay? So, 9x cubed minus itself is 0. And then, negative or 0 minus 6x squared is negative 6x squared. 0 minus negative 3x is positive 3x. And then negative 7 minus 0 is negative 7. Okay? Negative 6x squared divided by 3x squared is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 2 times positive 2x is negative 4x. And negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Okay? Again, we subtract. So negative 6x squared less itself is 0. 3x minus negative 4x is 7x. Negative 7 minus positive 2 is negative 9. Hence, the quotient is, okay, let's write the quotient. The quotient is 3x minus 2 plus the remainder 7x minus 9 over 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay? Now, we, we have to disregard the remainder 7x minus 9. Therefore, the line right, the line y equals 3x minus 2 from the quotient okay, is the oblique asymptote. Okay. So y equals 3x minus 2, this is a line, is the is the oblique asymptote of the given function g of x. That is the given the graph of the given function will approach and approach y equals 3x minus 2, but they will never intersect it since it's the oblique asymptote. 
So you have just learned everything about the vertical, horizontal, and oblique asymptotes of a rational function. Until next time.